Hello, Mr. O. Hello, Miss H. How are you today? I'm busy. Just hectic, hectic, hectic week right now. Um, it's always it always is. It's like first week of May where we have AP exams and there's right. playoffs for me, and then there's all kinds of testing, and my seniors are finishing up. It just is always one of the most intense weeks of the year for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely an intense uh, couple of weeks. Like I'm buried under grading, mm-hmm. and I feel like I'm I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's not quite there. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, speaking of lights at the end of the tunnel, uh, because they mostly will almost be there, let's talk about Nicole and Mahmoud. So Nicole is going after Mahmoud because she's worried about him being out in a on the crime-ridden streets late at night. He's left his phone, credit card, and cash behind, and Nicole doesn't think he has any intention of coming back. She gets in her car to look for him. Nicole feels responsible for Mahmoud, and she thinks if they were back in Cairo and she stormed off, he would come looking for her. She finds him walking with his suitcase, and she calls after him to get in the car, but he basically ignores her. Nicole parks the car and walks up to him and grabs him and tells him to get in the car. He tells her to stop as she grabs his arm. He's so confused about the situation because he thought she kicked him out, and now she's showing she cares by coming back to get him. He still loves her, but needs time to think clearly. He tells, uh, She tells him that she needs to know what he wants. He cries, saying that she told him to leave. Nicole says that she thought he wanted to go because he was packed up and ready to leave, and he didn't want to meet her friends and didn't seem to want to do anything while he was there. He continues to cry, saying she told him to like a hundred times to leave. Mahmoud feels like she's been acting like a different person in America. He asks for her to leave him alone to think, and she gets out of the car. Nicole thinks his crying means he's being more honest about his feelings, and it gives her hope that he's willing to change. Eventually, they go back to Nicole's apartment, where she instructs him to go to bed as she makes him tea. Nicole is feeling like things are doomed because of all the chaos over the last few days. She's hoping the past, uh, that past, the anger that there is hope. Nicole asks why he's taken off two nights in a row. Mahmoud asks why she came back with her friends while drunk. Nicole says that he'll have to learn to be a Muslim here. Uh, Mahmoud feels like she's trying to hurt him to prove a point. He says he's changed a lot for her, and he just doesn't feel love or respect. Nicole claims that Mahmoud said he would put his best effort to try and adapt, but doesn't seem to remember this intent. Nicole doesn't think that this is healthy. Mahmoud says he will stay there for a few days until he can decide if they should work it out or not. Nicole assures him that he can stay there, like meaning no more credit cards and uh, hotel rooms. But she says that they can't fight in the house and that he can sleep on the air mattress because they will not be sharing a bed. Mahmoud still loves Nicole and doesn't want to make a decision when he is mad because if he leaves, he's not coming back. He lays down on the air mattress, covers his face and cries a little more. All right. So do you agree with both of their assessments? Like Mahmoud feels like she's being a different person. Nicole thinks like he's not changing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I like Mahmoud seemed to have, have it pretty well assessed, I feel like. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she's a completely different person, but he, at some point he did mention that I think she's just getting revenge for Egypt. And it was like, yeah, yeah that's exactly what she's doing. Like, I it totally feels that way. Um, and so that one, I can go with it. I don't. I also, yeah, she's probably right, too, but he has no interest in changing. And you're not going to change if you don't really have an interest in changing. Right. It's not like he's like. Well, these are the things that I feel like my religion are, but I want to work on them. You know, it's kind of something that is just deeply ingrained. He's just like, no, that's my religion. And that's, I'm, as a religious person, that's what I that's how I should do things. And yeah. like, so I don't that's what gets me is like, I don't understand why why she even has the idea that he wants to change when he literally keeps telling her, no, I'm not going to change. This is how I am. This is what I'm going to keep doing. And then she's like, well, I just feel like maybe he's not going to change. And it's like, yeah, where did you get that hint? The goal? Yeah, but I also kind of empathize with him a little bit, like how drastic of a change. Like to me, it's like he's literally been here for two days. Even the friends were like, okay, it's been two days. Give him a couple of days to like just 
you know, not be jet lagged for once, right. uh, you know, for one, because it's like, it's very hard to have patience for a situation when you're just tired, you know? And so I'm sure that it's easy for him to fall back into old habits or not make any effort to change when you're tired. And it's like how much she's expecting like an instantaneous change, which I just, I don't think it's fair. No, and it's an instantaneous change on, like, so many weird fronts. Like, yeah. the one front they've always been fighting about, right? The clothes and mm-hmm. the drinking and the friends that he doesn't know and all this. And it, he still hasn't gotten a good night's sleep yet. And, and right. she's, she's on this. And, like, but it, it what, what's crazy to me is, like, both of them are terrible at fighting and it keeps making it worse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because it's like she, she he, she's, quote, unquote, worried about him. So mm-hmm. she basically kidnaps him. Like she catches him on the street and like manhandles grabs him into him a in car. The, yeah. Like grabs him and manhandles him into a car, right? And then takes him home when he's clearly upset and isn't doesn't offer any kind of uh understanding or empathy, but it the, like literally gets him home and the first thing is, Why did you run off twice? Why did you run away twice? And it's like what start off with, hey, yeah, you and he's like, and he's literally like, because you told me to leave twice, and she's like, but you were asking for divorce. It's like she just immediately. So there's no de-escalation techniques in Nicole, right? And yeah. that, that's that's what's upsetting. To, that's what I don't get is like she wants to de-escalate, but she literally wants she sees him in front of him cannot, and it's just like I must escalate. I must accuse him of something. I, 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 we're gonna have this fight again, right? It just. It, like I think back on the last time that we saw them on a show and I just feel like these are two different people like Nicole, Nicole in Egypt and Nicole in America are two very different people. Mahmoud in Egypt, Mahmoud in the U.S., same person. Same person. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I just I don't want to say it's unfair because I do think that one of the two is the true Nicole. And I'm going to guess it's the American Nicole. You yeah. know, where she is a little bit more freedom to not feel like pressure or, you know, whatever, to be a specific certain way that isn't her. But I, I don't know why she shows so shocked that he is seeing this American Nicole and being like, oh, I don't know if I signed up for this. Yeah. I mean, well, and the thing is, and the thing to kind of keep circling the drain around is – I feel like that big fight they had, she was drunk. And yeah. I think that's the first time he's seen drunk Nicole. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. And like, and that's, that's probably, that's, that's kind of a thing. Like, you know, is this going to be every weekend? Are you going to get like, you know, like this? And I think you're right. I think Nicole, American Nicole is how she wants to be. And mm-hmm. in Egypt, she just tried to put on uh, a face, tried to put on more of like an act and just couldn't keep it up. And that's why she had to leave. Right? right. And so she should also understand that he can't do that either. He can't put on a fake Mahmoud face and have it be a sustainable situation. He has to right. still be him. Right. Yeah. And she has to still be her. It's just that those two people that they each want to be are not compatible at all. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. So moving on, let's talk. Uh, let's go to Patrick and Thais because they were eh, pretty quick in there. So Thais is trying to straighten her hair and wondering, like, where Patrick just disappeared. She's like, where did he go? But we jump out. And the reason we did, he jumped out to get some flowers and cake for her 27th birthday. So it is Thais's birthday, and there's a lot of stuff going on today. So John is coming into town this evening, and Patrick and um, has to meet with Carlos, her dad, for the first time in, in a few years, and definitely the first time since they've got married and had a kid. So they playfully argue in an interview about who does better for the other person's birthday, and it very seem, clearly seems like Patrick does better for yeah. her birthday. Um, then they eat the cake that he got. And then they, they, don't, they can't stay too long to finish the cake. But they both go on and on about how Brazilian birthday cake is like so much better than American birthday cake. <laughs> but when yeah. they get on their way. So it's Thais's turn to drive. She says, she's like, can I drive? And after a quick prayer from, pra- prayer from Patrick, uh, she tries to drive but struggles to even get the car out of the parking garage. So then she's like, all right, fine, you can drive. So Thais is excited to see her dad, and Patrick is less so because Carlos pretty much hates him. So then it's time to meet with Carlos, and they take Elise to a playground, which is a place you can meet, even though she's too young to actually use any equipment. She does get a ride and a swing on Thais's lap. 
Um, so Grandpa Carlos, uh, he's in tears before he even gets, when he starts walking up to the uh, playground before he even gets there. So Carlos gives Thais a big hug and then grabs Elise and plays with her and is all the while clearly just ignoring, pa- actively ignoring Patrick. Patrick's <laughs> there being like, hi, I, uh, uh, and he won't even turn his head in Patrick's direction, just mm-hmm. pretending he's not there at all. So well, at least he's ignoring him until it's time to talk about like, you know, Patrick says something about like, well, you know, I'm a father now too, so I know how it is. And he's like, oh, so you know how it is when someone kidnaps your daughter and then marries God. them? Like, God. So then we get to the conversation that we've been kind of building toward for the whole season, where Carlos talks about how he expected Patrick Tait to ask for his blessing and Tait's hand, and he wanted to have the opportunity to even walk her down the aisle and all kinds of stuff. So Patrick says that he had, he, if he had known how important that this was to Carlos, he would have made sure that he did it. But and he also, to Carlos, kind of passes the buck and be like, this is all Thais's idea. And also, I already thought you knew we were getting married, so it was kind of weird to ask your blessing for something that had already happened. So Carlos said that, Patrick, um, that, you know, you were in Brazil two or three times. You still didn't ask. You had plenty of opportunity. Don't blame it on her. But then does ask for an apology from both of them. And, um, you know, even kind of lays, lays the guilt on thick. He's just like, all the kilos that I lost because of a heartache that she's lost. <laughs> yeah. So Thais, like, has this big, you know, heartfelt apology. And then he makes, and then he kind of implies that Patrick should, you know, maybe you should ask me for the blessing now. But Patrick steadfastly refuses to do it because he feels like if he did it right now, if it was like, you need to ask me now, ask me. And he asked, then it wouldn't really be authentic and it, it wouldn't mean as much. Um, so he wants to prove to Carlos first that, uh, you know, he he can demonstrate in person his love and care for his daughter before he actually asks uh, for her hand and for permission for the thing that he already did. Again, <laughs> keeps keeping that square. So Carlos says that, you know, he thinks Patrick should have should have asked now, but he'll give him a few days. But if he doesn't call, come and talk man to man, it's going to be an issue. <laughs> so what's your takeaway um, on Carlos here? Do you think? He is really, truly still upset, or do you think he just likes, is he just teasing uh, Patrick and getting a kick out of causing stress to this guy? I don't think he's teasing Patrick. I just think he doesn't like Patrick. And so he's giving him a really hard time for something that he should be over because he just doesn't like the guy. Um, I do think... It's really interesting. Like, if I was Patrick, I don't know what I would do. Because on the one hand, it's like, I think it's more of the gesture. But at the same time, I'm suspicious that Carlos would even say yes. Uh, You know, just because he seems so mad. It's like, Mm -hmm. ask me, ask me. Oh, yeah, you're going to ask me? No. Like, that's how (laughs) I I kind of imagine it going down that way. Like, no, I do not approve. And let me tell you all the ways that I disapprove of you. (laughs) Now, here are my here are my grievances. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And so I just kind of see it as, you know, Carlos's way of being able to, uh, you know, get another dig in at Patrick, whether he asks or not. Right. And so I just don't know if Patrick has in any scenario in this where he could possibly, quote, win. Yeah. And I think he probably is. That's he, I think Patrick can see that, too, which is why he's like, let me give it a few days, see if I can get him to like me. And then, you know, because he doesn't really know me that well. Let me show you my show him how much I care, show him how much I try. And then I'll ask and get a a, a winning like, yes, instead of just a. Right. No, you stupid loser who kidnapped my daughter. Get out of here. Right. Yeah. Right. So I just poor Patrick in this situation is just like no win. So Carlos, he's a tough cookie. Yeah. 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 I mean, but he's just uh, and it's one of those things that just some guys are just tough. Right. And they and, and mm. they get and they do like that's not let's not deny this. Carlos is loving the shit out of this. Like, he oh, loves, yeah, for sure being a hard ass and making him beg, feel like he's making him beg and making him jump over hoops and stuff. He loves this. Like he just, he does, he has that trolley side of him that is, the, that is absolutely liking that he's in control of the situation and can, you know, do stuff and, and troll him and make him feel bad. And he's, and I'm familiar with that. Guy. My dad is that kind of guy, right? And oh so, gosh. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a tough one to please and, and stuff. So I, I get where I, I understand the type. Let's put it that way. 
Oh, goodness. Okay, well, speaking of birthdays, it's also Jasmine's birthday. So Gino and Jasmine are in Miami for her birthday. Gino is preparing a bubble bath for her. Gino is also trying to be romantic, and he's planning on putting the moves on her. Jasmine is getting really excited about their gator tour later, and she's yammering on in the bedroom, and Gino asks, who are you talking to? She's kind of irritated because she was talking to him. She's picking her outfit out and wants to give alligator vibes and, you know, make them feel like she's part of the family. Jasmine had a gator back in Panama. She used to see that she named Sneaky. Gino shows her the bath and starts wiggling his toes at her. She asks if he's trying to seduce her and question mark. And I and Gino asks, is it working? Jasmine thanks him for the foot dance, but she doesn't really seem very interested. She wants to leave in the next two hours because it's supposed to rain. Gino is confused why she's playing hard to get. Jasmine has been avoiding him because she doesn't want to have sex because she doesn't want to get pregnant. She tells him that it will all happen, but not right now. Later, Gino and Jasmine are at the beach on their way to see the alligators. Jasmine misses Panama and she collects seashells like she did when she was a kid. Gino then tells Jasmine of how he used to collect things too, but he collected insects and liked to put them in a jar to watch them fight. Jasmine says that sounds like a serial killer mentality. They go to catch the airboat where Jasmine kind of catches uh, the tour guide off guard by asking to kiss his stuffed alligator head. Jasmine is excited about this boat ride and she wants to get friendly with the alligators. Gino thinks that, you know, she can't get too friendly, she can't get too close, and she might scare them off with her powerful voice. They get to see an alligator swim by and rub up on the boat as Jasmine baby talks to it. Jasmine says that this is the most exciting birthday she's ever had. She then chooses to tell Gino about the beauty pageant workshop that her friend Leandro signed her up for. He knows that Jasmine has been depressed and he wants her to feel more confident in herself and get a new perspective. Gino is incredibly supportive and would love to see her in a beauty pageant and thinks she could win. Gino says that he's been affected by Jasmine's happiness, so he hopes that cheering her up will help with their sex life and baby progress. Okay, do you think that Gino is completely oblivious to the fact that Jasmine is upset about not seeing her kids and probably doesn't want to bring another kid into the world, uh, given that it might like tear her even Further, like, from her kids, you know, she has to choose between being here with new baby and back in Panama with her kids. Uh, yeah, because in his head, she already agreed to have another kid. So end of story. Done, done, done. Like, so that's what we're doing. We're doing that. Like, and he is certainly just going to ride with that and go with that. Last time we talked about it, you said we were going to have another kid. So yeah. we're just going to go with that, right? I'm not going to revisit that. I'm not going to touch that situation in case it changed. And I'm also going to keep wiggling my gross toes at you oh, and, gosh. in an attempt to get. <laughs> yeah. I kind of felt like, you know, maybe he's trying to make her an anchor baby, you know, like trying to really get her to stay here if she has a baby. And it's like, you're an idiot, Gino. You think she cares enough about you to not leave with that baby back to Panama? Or without that baby. We've seen her leave with her, with her kids before, well, right? Well, that's true, Right? Because right? I, I, I might, wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, at least part of it is like the, well, I know she cares and I know she has to stay because there's this baby, right? Yeah. And that's that's the thing. That I could see. I don't. I mean, but he also does really seem to want his own children. Yeah. Um, which I don't know. It's it's f fine. But there was I was just a lot of a lot confused about a lot of the things here. Does she ever wear does Jasmine ever wear clothes at all? Or is he just always going to be naked? Oh, <laughs> gosh. Was, we're, uh, have we gotten a episode yet where they didn't have to blur something on Jasmine? Uh. No, what did they blur this time? I know she was in her underwear essential. Oh, oh, and it was a, and it was a thong. So, yeah, yeah, because she had lacy bra on. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. now I'm remembering. Yeah, she had a lacy see through bra on and a and a thong as her underwear. So they had to. Bl they always blur out thongs. So it's like, 
Yeah, I mean, it's it, it just everything is always just out all the time. Yeah, it seems like a beauty pageant so would be right up her alley, like just showing off everything. Nine. But it doesn't. But, 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 okay. You can't go out there well, like she wants here. to go out there in a beauty, beauty, beauty pageant. Oh, that's not how beauty pageant. Yes, they have okay. like the swimsuit thing, but they don't Hi, go Mr. out there Earl. and thongs in Miss H now. We'll be know, discussing the season eight episode. And the, 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 like, remember, we, she wore the bikini that was like the Nicole shoves my It was like the junior's bikini that had like the made for tiny boobs, and she just had it so it's just got her nipples. nipples. Yeah, like, that's, apology that's, from that's her and Patrick. That's not beauty. That's not going to win you. She's stressed out. Yeah, well, the they're classier than that. She'll just say they're Sophie haters and it's fine. Sophie is on the hunt for Rob's whole phone <laughs> and Manuel children his phone. That's what I actually, actually spirals out of control. I wonder if they're going to do that. And it's like, we'll if she comes to the beauty pageant, it's like, look, don't I look beautiful? And they're like, also back on our other channel. Well, that's your lock up. too much. You need to put more away. Yeah. So going back to your comment about Gino's gross toes, it's so funny that he thinks like, oh, these toes will turn her on and then we'll be having sex and part of that i feel like jasmine is to blame for being overly enthusiastic to a theatrical point of being Mm -hmm. into his toes now he thinks all he has to do is wiggle his gross ass toes and there will be panty dropping right and it's like i don't know if he thinks he's being like if he thinks he's being slick but it's like that man, that man has no game at oh, no. all. Like He's it's terrible. not a subtle like I'm gonna you know kind of come by here and make sure my toes are in her view. It's like, huh? huh? Hey, check out these. Look these. at my toes. <laughs> <laughs> like, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Let's get in this bathtub, huh? It's like, oh my god, this, <laughs> yeah. this feels so awkward. I feel like if she wanted to have sex with you before you started doing that, now she's out. Like right, you know, right. Is- and I thought it was so funny. She's like, are you trying to seduce me? <laughs> just slapping just stomping on the bathtub right. like, I mean if you like, have to ask things are not going well toes. <laughs> yes it's like are you trying to get down like, yes. that is a good point if you're wondering if it's if you have if you should then maybe not <laughs> All right, let's go on to – let's talk Sophie and Rob. So we catch up to Sophie and Rob in a flea market and they're checking out cowboy boots and sweating a lot, okay. which um, Rob says is more fun than the mall. And Sophie thinks eh. – Sophie also doesn't think they have flea markets in England, which – Rob probably correctly is like, no, you definitely do. <laughs> so when at the market, they come across Doug, Doug the life coach, Shaman Doug. Mm. He's selling crystals. So Sophie is really drawn or, is, you know, by drawn to, I mean, thinks the amethyst is pretty. And he sa- and Doug just speaks up and is like, it's good for insight and clairvoyance. And then Doug has to explain what clairvoyance means. <laughs> and uh, then Sophie starts talking about her visions. And Rob is just making faces about like, oh, my God, I cannot believe we're talking about this. This is so dumb. I don't believe in any of this. So she says, he says, you're not clairvoyant. You're just paranoid. <laughs> so Sophie asks Doug which crystal would be good for at healing relationships, you know, because that's what she wants to do with Rob. And again, he's like. Yeah, but this is good for that. You thought it was pretty. It's clairvoyant. It's good for that too. Sure. And then asks, you know, what needs to be fixed. So then she talks to this random guy at the at the market for a while about how, you know, Rob just doesn't listen. And then Doug just suggests that maybe you stop saying you all the time oh um, and maybe make a list of the things that you want the other person to improve on. But she doesn't like that because last time Rob gave her a list, it was dumb. She was like, you were always just talking about how I'm messy. My stuff was important. (laughs) So he wants them to talk with balance and, you know, they would need to have energy like the crystals and they should put aside their baggage and have an open heart. And then they can – and then they do like the least they can do after he talked to them for probably a lot longer than we saw. And they they do buy the amethyst crystal from this guy. And even Rob says – even if Rob says it's going to take more than crystals to fix things. So later on, we see Sophie trying to tidy up the house and she says she doesn't hate cleaning. She just doesn't like being told to clean. Those are moments where I'm like, yes, this is a teenager. She is a teenager. Like she's 20. I know she's not officially a teenager, but that is definitely teenager vibes. So she calls her mom who doesn't yet know that Sophie moved back into the house with Rob. And so that's really what she's trying to get to with this call. So Claire is obviously not enthusiastic about that decision. She tells – so Sophie tells us and Claire that they're going to go to couples therapy, which Claire only thinks is going to work if they're consistent and honest. And then she prods, which I think had to be a plant prod because she's just like, well, is there anything that's suspicious that's been going on now? And then we hear this weird event that happened. There was a phone 
ringing in what sounded like the bed and it rung and it rung and it rung and it cleared and something went to voicemail but then the voicemail greeting came on over their bluetooth speaker yeah and it was rob's voice and we'll get back to that um but anyway so then claire's convinced he's got a ho phone that's what that is yeah. it's his ho phone like you have to find it. Go looking for it. So now she's going to try to search the house. She thinks the most obvious place for him to hide it would be behind the tarantulas because she wouldn't look there. <laughs> so she tries to get Hunt and then one of them moves and she drops a book on one of the terrariums. But anyway, she – all she's still looking for this phone. She says, managed to say, if she, I find a whole phone, then this marriage is over. All right. So I wanted to talk about this situation because it made no sense no i'm confused why his bluetooth would pick up his message like that's how old school like answering exactly. machines work not modern day voicemails right if the whole phone was connected to the voicemail yeah right, it was connected to the bluetooth right which i don't think rob's dumb enough to connect his whole phone to a bluetooth well, at his house i don't know i wouldn't um, put it past him <laughs> But how else is he going to listen to his porn videos with headphones? Uh, like, be smart, Rob. We said Rob was not smart. So why would you listen to your porn out loud? I don't I understand. Don't like when there's other people about anyway. Yeah, it wouldn't be if it was his phone that was connected. You would not hear his voice, his outgoing message. No. That's not how phones work. Yeah, I know. Which, that means, isn't. It, which means that another phone. Oh, yeah. We, I left this part out. It was connected to the speaker and then – but then he looked at his phone that was in his pocket and it was in airplane mode. Yeah. And so he's like, it can't be – it can't be that one even though when you put something in airplane mode, you can then turn on the Bluetooth and it stays in- – Yeah. Airplane mode is very confusing because I have gotten text messages through airplane mode when my phone was only connected to Wi-Fi. And I'm confused by that. Right. How is an SMS coming through? But I Was don't it know. SMS or was it yeah, iMessage? It was an SMS. I, I know the difference. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm confused by airplane mode. I'm convinced airplane mode doesn't really filter out everything. Well, I know. I mean, I know I have to turn it on airplane mode mm. and then go and turn my Bluetooth on. And the airplane mode icon does not turn yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I hit to connect to my headphones, right. right, and the plane, and like so, you can be connected to head to the Bluetooth and that. So the only conceivable non this was a one hundred percent production plant mm-hmm. of two different phones is that his meg- regular phone was connected to the Bluetooth speaker, mm-hmm. even though it was still in airplane mode, and he butt dialed his whole phone. Yeah, I mean, I do think there's two phones because. I think the other thing that was kind of implied or said was that they were looking at the phone in airplane mode and they were getting no messages, but they could still hear the whole phone ringing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So I do think there well, are two the thing, phones. It had to be the phone making the call right. that was connected to the that was connected to the yeah, Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. And so why was the phone that was it just it it. it I don't know. It seemed like an elaborate ruse on the point of uh, from production to be like, let's get him in trouble. Like, yeah, maybe production knows he has a ho phone and is like, let's make Sophie suspicious that he has a ho phone. Right, like, right. Uh, I am a little surprised that the ho phone was not behind the tarantulas, but then also, I feel like the ho phone is probably on him if she's in the yes. house by herself looking for the for ho sure. phone. For sure. Especially when he knows the ho phone has been compromised. Yeah. Like there's going to be a suspicion that there's a ho phone involved. He's going to get it out of the house. Right, he's not going right. to leave it at home while she's there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even, and even if he's not that smart, if he's out, that's when he's talking to the hose. Yeah. He's not going to talk to the hose while he's home. Like, of course, he's going to take it with well, him. Well, I mean, yeah, yes and no. I do feel like a lot of what he's kind of said with the ho phone isn't necessarily about meeting up with other people. It's about like – watching the porn that randos are sending right him. i guess that's true it's it's more about like yeah it, it, it is talking and 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 pictures and things like that than it is about like meeting up yeah. so it could that is that is the kind of the kind of thing he would do at home alone and not away from home alone. right 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 and so i don't know i kind of get the impression that rob may have a thing slash maybe addicted to porn yeah, I, it's it's not porn though. Like it, it I don't know. It's because it, it's. I mean, isn't that all like in a way form porn? You know, it's just more on demand porn these days, right? 
you can No, but I mean I think there's a there is a significant difference between spending all your time on Pornhub and messaging people to get nudes specifically made for you and sent to see, you. See, I don't see that much of a difference because you say Pornhub, but sure, but like what about OnlyFans where you're messaging them and paying them money to send you custom videos? Same thing. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I, 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 I consider that a different category than porn because it, because of the interactive nature. Yeah, I kind of think of cam girling as a form of porn because mm-hmm. that's essentially what's happening, right? Right. But it's like but, – but that's my thing is he has to be addicted to the interaction, mm-hmm. right? Because he has plenty of outlet to just have passively consumed porn, you know? Yeah. Like that – I don't think she'd be upset. I don't think she'd be as upset about that. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, Let's move on to our last couple, uh, Lauren and Alexi. So Lauren is rounding up the kids for a group photo. She has a few jitters. This is before her surgery. And Alex is getting kids ready for daycare. Shy asks Lauren to help him in the bathroom. That's their oldest son and says that she needs to come back. The kids think that the doctor is fixing a boo-boo. She wants the kids to see her looking and feeling her best. Lauren cries when the kids leave because she's not going to see them for a few days. She just wants to put this all behind her now. She wants to be positive and not stress. Alex comes back from daycare and asks her how she feels. Lauren is having an emotional moment as Alex is cleaning his nose. He says it's stuck deep, so he has to blow hard. And Lauren's kind of annoyed by this because she's trying to pour her heart out while he's honking away. Lauren is excited about getting her body back and thinks it'll be good for them individually and for them as a couple. They drive to surgery and Lauren gets uh, called in for her five hour surgery. Alex is nervous, but he can only be supportive. The doctor reminds Lauren that her recovery is important, so she can't lift. And that means really limiting her ability to help take care of the kids. They mark up Lauren's body with a marker and Alex hopes that her six pack isn't bigger than his. She goes under and gets we see the beginning of her getting cut open. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. so I don't know how you feel about this, but do you really think that this is for the family or do you think it's just for her and she just needs to own it? Yeah, that's a little that that's a little frustrating is is to be like is to say it's for the family. Mm -hmm. It's for her. But she's kind of. Because it's kind of a little bit of a of a of a bad road to go down and be like, yes, but I'm the leader of the family. <laughs> so sure. when I am happy, the whole family is happier. Therefore, right. I should just get whatever I want all the time. Yeah. Like that's not that's not necessarily the one attitude you want to have for these kind of things. But yeah, she should probably just just admit that she's doing this for herself. And that's okay to do things for yourself sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I think it is hard to admit because it's like you are really spending the family's money. You are, Mm -hmm. you know, putting your responsibilities on someone else uh, during recovery. And I mean, I I don't know. I feel like she's lying to herself. And I think it's also indicative of like why she's feeling this way about herself. If she thinks that their relationship is going to be better off if she, quote, looks better. I think that's part of why she's so unhappy with how she looks. I mean, if she were to just come to terms with and really accept that he loves her the way that she is and that. You know, going through a body transformation isn't going to make him love her anymore, isn't going to make him more attractive, attracted to her. And I think part of it is like, I don't think it's necessarily physicalness of him being attracted to her. I think it's also how you feel, right? If you feel down Mm -hmm. about yourself and you're always covering yourself up and you're not confident, it's like that. Yes, that's the part that is affecting the attraction and not necessarily the actual physical stuff. Well, yeah, for that, 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 that's the relationship between her and Alexi. She also like did the weird thing of implying that it's going to improve the relationship with her and her children. I know, right? Like. My like, sorry, you could and not that they were. They, they're well off. They'll sure. be fine. It's not going to be a situation where it's like, yeah, we don't have money for college, but wasn't it nice to have a hot mom when you were growing oh, up? God, I know, wasn't right. that better? Wouldn't you have rather had a hot mom than go to college? I mean, at the end of the day, right? right? And that kind of goes back to what you were saying about. I think she's delusional about. Oh well, if I'm happy, everything everyone else will be happier. 
Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, oh, if if they see mommy happy, then they'll be happier. It's like, yeah. And and that's where I think the thing is going. I mean, it's not going to. It, she will like the way she looks yes, I think so. better. Mm-hmm. Will it make her the happy, the contented happiness that she wishes she had? No. Yeah. Like it won't. Because surgery because can only get you so far. Your, exactly. Accepting yourself is goes beyond just getting a surgery to kind of get yourself closer to where what you want because that's a moving target. It is. Right. Whenever you do get that, then it changes to something else and it moves on to something right. else. Right. So now that you've dealt with your post baby weight, now you have to deal with getting older. I mean, you know, yeah, and then it's right. like mm-hmm. what you're saying. It's always going to be something. So if you can't accept, I think it's it's just hard for me to relate to. And I get that people go through it. But, you know, it's it, I think it's just hard. And I don't want to speak too much on it because it is. It's hard for me to go to relate to women who are going through this as someone who has never had to deal with a baby body sure. post uh partum sure, body sure. you know sure i mean but a lot of it is just like it's a voluntary surgery yeah. right and it just i i don't know that's that's what part of the, the disconnect just from me mm-hmm. from my perspective from my personal experience and again forget the mothers i'm not even a woman right, right? i don't even have those pressures of, of going through the world as a woman with the you know people valuing their looks and all that stuff too so i understand it's a completely different situation but I'm looking at that and being like, you are very, very stressed out. The sh- amount of stress mm-hmm. and nerves that she looked like before this surgery, I was like, I don't – there is nothing my body could do. I could mm-hmm. wake up with the perfect body that I've always envisioned and I'm like, it wasn't worth that. Yeah. It wasn't worth that stress. Like, absolutely was not. And so the idea that she's going through all this for something that is, again, at the end of the day, voluntary. Yeah. Right? That it, it is just like – and it's kind of like, yeah, it just it, – it's – it's, again, hard for me to understand. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying it's hard for me to understand. Yeah. Okay. I have a maybe too honest question for you so you can choose to pass. Um, mm-hmm. Did you feel like your attraction to your ex-wife was different postpartum? No. So it didn't matter no. to you that she – her body just looked different. And I, I think she did gain some – I mean, she eventually lost all of it and then some, but – yeah, yeah, and she and, and that's yeah, it, that was a little bit of a comp- more complicated thing. Yeah. But no, like it, it, at a certain point when you've been with somebody for that long and that, that that amount of time, your attraction to them isn't really based on what their stomach looks mm-hmm. like, right? It's like you, you just like it's 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 they're they're the, they're them, and that's the, that's it's just I don't know, it's it's hard to explain, but like what they look like has less to do with how attracted how attracted you are to them mm. and what you want to do and you know you want wanting to be in, intimate with them and stuff now postpartum I think a lot of people have that have the se- the sex life thing because postpartum there's all kinds of hormones and stuff sure. with sex drive and then you're just so fucking busy and yeah, tired all the yeah, time yeah. like that's that's really the yeah, bigger thing I that guess happens. My, my question like, wasn't about your sex life afterward. It was more like you know because like Alexi telling Lauren you know I'm just as attracted to you like you know you're still beautiful to me like him saying that to her she just doesn't believe him. Right. And because she just she can't imagine that it's true. Like she he must be lying. So it's like, no, I don't think she even thinks he's lying as much as it's like, I don't believe I believe you're saying that because we've been through so much Mm -hmm. together. Right. But I know I'm less attractive than I was before. And I know if we met tomorrow, you wouldn't be attracted to me. Mm. Right. And he can't. He can't speak to that because he's attracted to the person that's the mother of his children, mm-hmm. right? Like, and that's – there's too much history there for him to be an honest assessor of what she looks like sure. now and how attractive she is now. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's fair. I, I can see and get all that. All right. So uh, we did not see Emily and Kobe. No, we're not. We have two more people we to do? go to. What are you? Uh, you're, yeah, yes, I have. I well, not two more. I still have Ashley and Manuel oh, to get to. Oh gosh. Oh god. <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot about. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we start with Ashley and Manuel, and she is still yelling at him in this bar oh, about this whole communication and trust thing. So she really doesn't like how he said about something about her, how she doesn't let him go anywhere. And she just storms off while he, at this point, she's reached this level of, of anger and, and frustration and, and, and craziness that Manuel is just like, I'm going to look at my phone and let this whole blow over. <laughs> I'm not engaging with this at all. Um, 
so she goes to the front of the bar, the front room of the bar, and uh, keeps. She's apologizing to the bartender for making it. We're sorry, we're so loud at your bar. We made a big, you know, big scene at your bar. And then some bar patron is like, "Well, you know, you could just like not yell. That that's an option." <laughs> and so she's like, "Well, I yell because I wasn't listened to enough when I was a child." Oh gosh! Which I said, "Oh my god!" out loud. Yeah. And then the guy at the bar had a better comeback because he said. I laughed out loud when he said, well, I don't know. Maybe you want to go sit down over there, couch over there and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> to which a joke that she completely missed and just thought that he was hitting on her. So she was like, no, I don't want to talk to you. Men are the men are the enemy right now or oh, something gosh. like that. So anyway, she um, – Manuel, just, again, this whole time, just sitting in the other room thinking that uh, maybe this whole thing isn't about me at all. Maybe, especially because she was yelling about not being loved as enough as a child, and that's why she's yelling. He's like, maybe she wasn't loved enough as a child. Right. <laughs> it must, but he honestly thinks it must be something in her past because it's not like he's ever done anything that would cause her to not trust him. So she's asking, like, then she starts just asking around the bar for cigarettes. She's like, Do you have a cigarette? Anybody got a cigarette? I need a cigarette. Just the most annoying person to come across when you're at a bar oh my gosh, ever. I know. Like, they're just awful. Um, so anyway, um, Manuel just thinks that, you know, even though he moved to New York to be with her, he deserves his own private life. So they finally leave, get outside of the bar and every, so they can have a cigarette and Ash, everybody's having a cigarette. Ashley and Aaron are smoking with some rando from the bar named Chauncey. And Ashley asks about how both people, you know, Ashley is like, well, the important thing is that both people need to take ownership of the problems and I take ownership of mine and Manuel doesn't. So that's gaslighting. Okay which it definitely is not. <laughs> that is not what gaslighting yeah. means. <laughs> so Aaron says that uh, they have love though, so it's worth fighting for. And Aaron also says, the stars are aligned for with you. And like Ashley starts to feel better. And then Manuel thinks he's shut the hell up successfully long enough uh, for Ashley to just resolve herself. So she comes to talk to him and he says he doesn't understand why. She's like, do you understand why I was mad? And he's like, not really. No. Uh, just about been all the people in the past that made you not trust me for some reason. <laughs> so she doesn't know how this is going to last if he doesn't admit his part in the faults in the relationship. Oh my gosh. And then she's still mad later because the next day she's taking out – we see her taking out her frustration to the gym. So she tells producers that she's still irritated. She's irritated because – Early in the morning, she heard Manuel like get up and like say something on his phone and then dipped out. And it was about like, I know, where are we going? Like, what are we doing? And, and it just dipped out and he went to grab breakfast with Jonathan, which she says is totally fine. But it just – she just – he just left her wondering where he was for like hours. He, she didn't text at all. So she rants on that for a while and then goes back to the hotel room where again, Manuel just chilling on the phone, like laying down on the bed, looking at his phone. So she matches – she – I guess tries to match his energy, so she just goes and sit on sits on the couch on her phone. So he asks, like, "So are you uh, still mad? Because you can take as much time as you need. Just <laughs> stop being mad." So he thought he was being nice. He was letting his wife rest. He wasn't waking her up and go instead. And he just went to breakfast on his own. But she took it the wrong way. It must be her insecurities again. So she. She yells that he's not listening to what she wants and how it's really easy to send a text just saying, you know, I went to breakfast with Jonathan and he doesn't even have the the patience or the, the foresight to do that. So he counters that you could have asked me where I was yeah. at any point and you didn't do that. So she still thinks he should have said something even if she didn't ask. And he says that the reason he didn't is because – if she would, if he would have said something before he left, she would have tried to tag along. And he didn't <laughs> want to try to tag along. He wanted to go with his friend alone. So she yells it. Then she just like yells, "Well, I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm not talking to you." So he gets up to take a walk. But in order to take a walk, um, he's got to have his money and his card. He keeps saying his card. I'm not sure if he meant a credit card or like the hotel key. Yeah, who um, knows? But she's so committed to not talking to him that when he's like, "Can I have my card?" Her response is, "I'm not talking to you." <laughs> Get away. Get away. I'm not talking to you. So then she, then he leaves without her and according to her, uh, you know, got his wish of being there without her. So he doesn't see how it's logical to stay with someone if she keeps thinking the world revolves around her. Oh, yeah. So let's let's start with that end. Like how hard does Ashley think the world revolves around her? I just – I find it so incredibly frustrating what she did like at the end with her not – because it's like – to me, it's just like, oh – you know, 
if I'm on okay terms with you, you have access to the hotel room, you have access to money. Oh, but if I'm like mad at you and I'm not talking to you, then you no longer have access to these things. And it just seems so controlling, Mm -hmm. you know, like just throw the money at him. I, I don't care what you do, but you're basically trapping him there. And that just seems like you're trying to have a power move, you know, like show. Which is, which which kind of fills in what Manuel says about yeah. her all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, she's trying to control yeah. me. And then he's like, well, can I have my money in my wallet? And she's like, no. Yeah. I'm not talking to you. Which I which was so frustrating because Manuel didn't say it. I would have been like, I'm not asking you to talk to me. I'm asking you to hand me my wallet. Right. Like, that's, that's not like, yeah. you don't have to talk to do that. Just give it to yeah. me. It's mine. And then what do you do in that situation? It's like... If someone is stonewalling you like that, it's like, that's how people become violent to get their way. Yeah. That's when people start grabbing stuff. Because yeah. she's just like, get away. She even started yelling like he was getting violent yeah. when he definitely was not. Right. right. Get away from me. Get away from me. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah, she was super frustrating there. Like I said, the worst, like, I always hate when I'm at a bar and there's somebody like her in the bar. Yeah. And everybody's just like, shut the hell up, lady. Oh, my God. Nobody cares about your problems and about how nobody listened to you when you were a child. Oh gosh. Why are you talking about this? Yeah, she is incredibly infuriating through this whole thing. And it's like, I don't know. At first, I didn't really like him so much. And I thought that he yeah. did his part in kind of pissing her off. And now that we see them a little bit more. And you see that it's not that he tries to confront and resolve, but he certainly tries to step back and diffuse, you know, if anything, he's Mm -hmm. never trying to escalate anything. Yeah. Well, he he's he's poked some. He doesn't do it loudly. Mm -hmm. Right. He 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 prods a little like a a little jab here, a little joke there Mm -hmm. that he knows is going to send her is going to get under her skin like he does do that. Yeah. But I just feel like he's not you know escalating it himself no i think in this one in this one he was very much like i know her well enough that anything i say is gonna not work so i'm not gonna say anything i'm just gonna sit here and wait for this whole thing to go over yeah (laughs) just yeah incredibly frustrating and and i was with her it was funny for the second one i was kind of with her when it's like yeah it's kind of weird for your husband to just get up and leave Mm -hmm. and not even be like hey i went to breakfast with jonathan that is a little weird yeah but it's also weird to see that he didn't message you and not be like, hey, where did you go? Right. And just get madder and madder when he just, how has he not texted me yet? It's like, because you didn't text. The phone works two ways, man. Like, like, and then, and then complain that it's communication that's the issue. Right. Right. When you're passive aggressively using communication to test him about whether he's going to come do guess the right way that he's supposed to communicate with you. Mm, yeah. They, I mean, both of them are on to something. You know, that this isn't going to work out, but it's like, but are they actually doing anything about it? Nah. No, no. They're doing the, I just, but they both kind of, they are both really guilty on, he needs to work on it. It's like, well, what does work on it look Mm -hmm. like? Right? Yeah. Because we don't have that. Because it totally, this whole thing, and I think he would be much more receptive to just being like, if the whole thing was resolved with, hey, where you at? Oh, I went to breakfast with Jonathan. Oh, okay. Well, next time, can you just text me like when you leave? Okay, cool. Like that, <laughs> that that's... That would require both of them to be like reasonable <laughs> people. And they're just not. <laughs> but that's just, that's the kick conversation that normal healthy relationships right, have. Right. It's like, oh man, next time just let me know because I was a little worried about where you were. Like, like I said, like, you know, if you were talking about reasonable <laughs> people, that would be a reasonable expectation. But that is not who we're talking about here. No, it's not. We're talking about the pe- person who insists that she does not say, hi, Ashley, I'm a witch. When in fact... She does say, hi, I'm Ashley, I'm a witch. Okay, get out of here, girl. All right, uh, so out of the groups that we saw, who would you say is your student of the week? I went with Patrick. Mm -hmm. Just enough, um, you know, to to be trying and also, I wouldn't say playing the game because it's not a game, but like kind of recognizing that when he's in this weird like trap and like, okay, I I need to do it a little bit differently than what's... Blatantly being asked of me because that's going to go poorly. 
Yeah, I mean, I went with Thais. She yeah. was a good daughter uh, in that she apologized when dad asked for an apology. And right. uh, it was her birthday. So, yeah. It was her birthday. Yeah. That's true. Uh, That's what true. about your dunce? My dunce was Ashley. Like, this is just... I, I, and, and every time we see her, and I, this has been true from the beginning yeah. of Ashley. Like, the first time thing we saw of Ashley was her being like, I'm going to hyperventilate in the oh, car. God. I immediately was like, could not date this person at all. Would would immediately break up. Like, just get away from me. Right. Like, like and not get away from me like in that, but it's just like, this is just not a person I could deal with on any level at all. We And so she's just, everything she does on this one is just super off-putting yeah. to me. Yeah, I mean, I also went with Ashley um, just because I felt like her tactic of her version of the silent treatment was really controlling. Sure. And I didn't like that, mm-hmm. which actually lends to my life lesson. So my life lesson kind of applies to Nicole and to Ashley. Uh, you should not be holding on to your significant other's things in a way that keep them trapped somewhere. Sure. Right. Or helpless mm. somewhere. Because Nicole, you know, she was worried because Mahmoud uh, left his phone and well, she kind of had his phone. Yeah. And his I mean, she was sending wallet. out vibes of like, I'm going to take his passport. So he has to stay here. Yes, <laughs> like, definitely. Like, yes. <laughs> and then Ashley is, you know, holding on to, uh, you know, Manuel's like uh, credit cards and possibly the room key. So you should not be holding on to anything that would keep your significant other trapped or stranded somewhere yeah i mean mine is the point of a hoe phone is that nobody finds it so you should not connect it to your stuff oh that's just gosh. like weirdly well why would you do that i don't know don't connect it to your bluetooth don't connect anything to anything it yeah. shouldn't be also and if it if he did butt dial his own hoe phone a that means he called his own hoe phone before oh which why would you do that and b it was in the contacts why would you do that yeah like duh. i mean rob Makes is not sense. A brilliant man. <laughs> so who knows what he was thinking? Yeah. Like, who, I have my whole phone in my well, contacts. Hopefully, you know she goes to your phone. Yeah, hopefully next episode, Sophie be fine in the whole phone. Yes. Yeah, yeah we can only hope. All right. So uh, until then, we'll be back uh, next week. Yep. Okay. See everybody then. Bye. Okay. Bye. Good.